Well, in today's video, we're gonna have a little update on the Chevette and uh, on a new truck that I bought. So, we'll go look at the new truck. There's a Suburban from the old videos, if you see those. It still runs good. It's got a different set of heads on it now and uh, different carburetor. Here's my truck, which if, in your, if you're in my family, you'd be surprised, but uh, it is a Ford, 1987 F-250 with the 6.9 diesel, four-wheel drive automatic. With a gear vendor's overdrive underneath it. Right up there somewhere. So that's pretty nifty. It's got cold air, which is nice. Bought this truck from a old lady who was selling it and I don't know why she had a straight pipe on it but it's all straight pipe sounds and smells like a tractor so and it's got a 40 gallon fuel tank in here so that's my new truck And now we'll update you on the Chevette. Little update, because I haven't filmed anything recently. One thing I've really done is I put in these uh, braces here, because I cut the original frame rails out where they came from here to here, which these are back further. And they give me a little more clearance because my tire was hitting on the other frame rail. So, plan for today is to get these plated in on the get the frame rails plated welded solid and weld the plates in on the bottoms where they uh, meet the rocker panel so we'll try to get that done and see if we get anything else done on to the metal work today for the Chevette working on the firewall got my 20 gauge sheet metal here there's a piece I cut out earlier that didn't work. Got uh, the Eastwood bead roller thing, pretty cool. So, I've got one side in here tacked in. Got some beads in it, trying to make it not so tinny, a little stiffer. So, I'm gonna try to do another piece. <clears throat> over here to tie in underneath here and go down to the frame here and then wait to do the middle until I get the motor sitting back in there so I know how tight I can make it. Got the second piece of sheet metal cut out for the driver's side of the firewall. Just got done drilling my holes in the bottom. I'm gonna just spot weld it, kind of sort of rosette. To the frame rail and then I'll drill some holes in the rest of the metal on the firewall and plug weld it through there too so this piece uh, this piece sits in here kind of like this I still got to clean the top up a little bit and uh, grind some welds down so it'll sit flat on the bottom but that's pretty much how that's gonna sit and then I'll have two-thirds of a firewall here is the other side finally welded in I ended up uh, stitching it across the top to make it a little more solid but uh, that side looks pretty good it's got the uh, plug welds in the bottom so once we get the motor put in to see where the middle needs to sit we'll get the, the middle part built and 
put in there. I don't feel like you would. So much torque. Big pear tree. Alright, we're ready. <laughs> Look at the sidewalls, folks. Your tree was dead. You already ran over it. You ran over it and killed it. Sound, sounds like it's working harder. Subaru hooked to this tree here. Had a big storm, blowed it over. We're going to see if we can slide it out from between these other two trees. He's on. Oh, oh no, he's hooked. Here we go. Oh, stop. It's got a fork on the other side of the tree. No, that's that other one that's broke down. You can pull on it. I don't know that you're going to do any good. Is this going to stay on if I take tension on it? Yeah. We have reached the power limit of the Subaru. Traction limit. Traction limit, which is near the power limit. Nailed it. Pull it out of there. Woo! You're you're clear. What tree? Just a little tree. Nothing. Literally can't even feel it. Can't even tell it's back there. I don't think the four-wheel drive works. There it goes. Why don't you use the front wheels? <laughs> Why would you even try in two wheel drive? It's not even the same line. 